Okay, we're going to do the numbers. <laughs> You've already had the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, which are indeclinable adjectives. Okay, there's no inflectional endings on them. But the numbers 1 to 4 have some inflectional endings. Only one of them, the word for one, has three genders. The others have either one gender or two. So let's look at the inflection of the word for one, which is a nightmare. Um, it's haste, that's one nominative singular masculine. Mia, feminine nominative singular, and hen, neuter nominative singular. It looks like they're three different words. Um, they're actually the same words. It comes from sems, and a whole bunch of changes happen. It's the, the root uh, of the, it's the same as the word once in English, and if you know Latin, semel, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of these things. But anyhow, so it's, it's a combination of e, of e and s and m. Lots of changes happen. So this is a really common word in any language, the word for one. Um, so you've got to learn it. Okay, so it's time to do, do some memorizing. Heis mi hen. You can see from the genitives, henos, mias, henos, how all the other forms will go. So really all you need to do is learn the nominative, three nominative singular forms for the three genders, and then the genders, henos, uh, and the genitives rather, that will tell you what the stems are. Henos, mias, henos. So then it's heni and hena in the masculine, mia with the dative iota subscript, mian in the accusative, and heni and hen. Maybe you can help It'll help you to remember Mia, because it's the common name, like Mia Faro. It doesn't come from Mamma Mia. It comes from Greek, the one girl. Mm. Right? Okay. And then there's the word for two. Okay. Um, it, uh, and Hansen and Quinn doesn't teach you dual forms, unfortunately. But that's what the, the forms of dua are. Sometimes it's dua, sometimes it's duo, actually with an omega, but anyway, in older Greek. But dua is nominative and accusative, and duoin is genitive and dative dual, okay? Um, so that's, they're just form, four words to learn for the inflection of, of dua, or actually two, the dua form and duoin, right? Great. It's pretty easy to learn. Um, the next one we're going to look at is three, tres, okay, obviously cognate with English word three, um, all of the forms except the nominative and accusative singular are the nominative and accusative plural, right? There are no singulars of three. My goodness. It's like there are no plurals of one. Uh, in Greek, anyway, you can't say uh, you're the, they're the ones, hmm. right? Oh, There's yeah. no way of doing it in Greek, anyway, at least that I know. But um, these words are only plural, so there, uh, there's tres, and that's the nominative and the accusative plural forms, and then everything else is built on a stem three. So tree, it's from tray, yes, okay, the trace form. It was, it's E with a Y, okay, the I turned into a Y with a suffix at the vowel. Tray, yes, okay, the Y disappeared, you get an, a contraction, and that's why you have trace, okay, and the old nominative recusative third declension masculine endings were the same as they see in Latin like, and we also have seen in some other, other uh, STEM nouns, okay? Anyhow, so um, there you have trion and trisi, and in the neuter, tria is the nominative and accusative plural forms, and trion and trisi. Um, in the, in the, the number four, tetares, which is uh, cognate with quatuor in Latin, and ultimately, after a lot of changes, four in English, you get Tetares, tetaron, tetarsi, right? These are third declension adjectives. There's no uh, e or o vowel between the stem tetar and the endings, but they're pretty regular. Tetares, tetaron, tetarsi, uh, and tetaras. And then the neuter plural is tetara, and the masculine and the feminine datives and genitives are the same for the neuter, tetaron, and tetarsi, and then again the neuter plural, tetara. Okay, the other thing we want to look at is this, the way you say, we, we had the word for one, heis, mia, hen, henos, mias, henos. Um, what we're going to look at now is the way you say no one, okay? And this is a compound of two Greek words, which is one which is already a compound, ude, okay? And 
the word for one. So what's happening is that in udes, it's not a compound in the sense of they they merged again. Then what's happened is the e eh of ude has been has been apostrophized, if you want. Mm -hmm. It's been dropped out. So you see no there's no contraction of ude and heis. You get udes. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the feminine, it's ude mia. Okay? So so it's there you can see that you've retained the uh, of ude and you're just adding the word for one. And uden is like udes. You drop the e in ude and you get uden. So the inflection of it just follows the inflection of heis mia hen. It's going to be udenos, uda mias, udenos, uda me, uda miai, and udene, and then udena, uda mian, and uden. And there's no plural of the word for no, no, no one, <laughs> or nothing. That's what it means in the neuter, remember? Right. Not a thing, okay? Um, because you have u and me in Greek, you can also have, as much as you can have udes, you can also have medes, okay? This is from meda plus heis, okay? So important to realize that that is there. Now, now the book teaches you a really beautiful rule about how double negatives work in Greek. In English, when you double negatives cancel each other out, right? Um, uh, he's not nobody means he's somebody, mm -hmm. okay? Um, in in Greek, you have a rule about sequence that governs negative. So if you have um, a simple negative, like u, followed by a compound negative, like udes, um, what happens is they reinforce each other. They don't cancel each other out. So the book gives you the example of uk a pesin udes. I'm gonna write that one down. Yeah. Uk. There's the simple negative uk with the with the kappa suffix that you have before a vowel. A pesin. We'll talk about this form in a second. A pesin with an acute on the first syllable, and then udes. So udes is the nominative singular masculine of the word for no one, and a pesin is a compound of a pa and the verb aime to go. One thing that I forgot to mention and should have in the video we did about, about the verb to go is that although the forms, we talked about the forms being present and imperfect and so forth, the present of aime functions in Attic Greek and Classical Greek as a future of the verb erchomon, which is the regular verb to go. So you're, you're, you're using different verbs to constant com compose a paradigm or a or a system. Anyway, so in classical Attic anyway, a basin is a future. And what this means is not, not, it says literally, not no one will go away. And that means for sure no one will go away. Those two negatives reinforce each other. Okay? If you do it the other way around and you say udes uk a basin, you put the compound negative udes before the uk. Okay, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Udes, uk, apesin. Then they cancel, cancel each other out the way they do in English. Okay, um, no, no one will not go away. That means everyone will go away. Okay, so if you do simple followed by compound, they reinforce each other. Mm -hmm. If you do compound followed by simple, they cancel each other out. Cute rule.